Jesus answers prayer with justice. Hallelujah. This is lesson 11 of the Bible study on the book of Acts. And I'm very excited about what we are going to learn today about the justice of the Lord Jesus and how he powerfully answers prayer. And so let's pray and ask him to help us. Father, we come in the name of Jesus and we thank you today that Lord Jesus, you triumphed over sin and death and over all the forces of darkness on the cross. And when you raised, was raised from the dead on the third day, you conquered everything. And you rule, you ascended to heaven, and we celebrated that yesterday. And you, you, you ascended to heaven, and you seated at the right hand of the Father, at, at glorified. And you rule from heaven with majesty and power as the king and judge of mankind, of both the living and the dead. And so we thank you for this, Lord Jesus. And so teach us how to... Uh, petition you for justice in Jesus' name. Amen. Before we get to uh, this section on uh, where we're going to learn about the justice of the Lord Jesus in the book of Acts, uh, we uh, first need to just continue where we left off last time. So last time we looked at um, uh, uh, Acts chapter 10 and the beginning of chapter 11, the story of Cornelius and the, that breakthrough into the harvest with the Gentiles. And that was one of the breakthroughs. Then there was also, uh, Saul was busy in uh, uh, Syria and Seleucia, busy preaching the gospel there uh, from uh, Tarsus where he was based and planting churches there. And then we, we know that already there was also the moving out amongst the uh, Samaritans by uh, uh, Philip, the evangelist. But now, in that same time that Philip went out, as he was scattered out of Jerusalem, and uh, the scattering took place under the persecution of Saul before he got arrested by the Lord Jesus, many people started going out and, and preaching the gospel everywhere. And some of those actually went all the way to Antioch. And and in all the other places where the Jews had been scattered preaching the gospel, the believers, uh, believing Jews, uh, they would preach only to Jews. But in Antioch, not only did they start preaching to the Jews there, probably went to the synagogue and started preaching the gospel there, but then they reached out and started proclaiming the gospel to the Gentiles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this is a breaking out, uh, again, a third front of the harvest that was happening. And these were people from Syria and Cilicia, uh, Syria and, and Cyrene in Africa that had uh, gone and, and uh, forward and did this. And uh, they started establishing a church there in Antioch that were a, a mixture of uh, believing Jews and now believing Gentiles. And news about this reached the apostles and the elders and the church in Jerusalem. And, and remember there, and, and we will see that this suspicion about the Gentiles is something that we continually need to deal with. And it's, it's really an age old fracture, an age old line of division. And, and we will talk about this uh, in, in later lessons, how Paul addresses this. But um, there, there was this line of division with the Gentiles. And the Jews throughout the ages had uh, um, basically uh, looked down on the Gentiles, despised them. They had a prejudice against them. And uh, uh, they, they looked at them as, as unclean and defiled. And here the Lord was going to cause the major expanse of the gospel not to happen amongst the Jews who always claimed to have God for themselves, but they rejected their own Messiah. And many, some of them did believe, obviously the, the apostles were all Jews, 
uh, and many of the first disciples were all Jews, and, men, and those that first proclaimed the gospel to the Gentiles were all Jews also. And, and so we have to honor that and recognize that uh, the, the Jews, even in our day today, we want to see them come to the Lord Jesus because until they come to the Lord Jesus, uh, we are not complete. We are grafted in as Gentiles into the, the original uh, olive plant, which is the Jews. So it's important for us to recognize this in, 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 in seeing this division and, and this battle uh, to reach out to the Gentiles. It is not at all that we become anti-Semitic and now uh, uh, take an attitude as Gentiles. No, it is a privilege that the gospel has been given to us. But it comes from the Jews and, and it's first from the Jews, all right? So we must continue to honor them and not hold their attitudes and their judgment against the Lord Jesus by um, partaking in his him being crucified. Hold that against them. No, we love the Jewish people. I want to make that very clear as I, as I, but this was the reality at that time, even in the church. And so they sent Barnabas to go and check out from the church in Jerusalem. They sent him on an apostolic mission to go and check out what is going on there. Obviously, in a sense, to come and uh, sort things out. But remember, he already was the one that brought Paul to them. He is the son of encouragement. And and. Actually, this is very interesting. Uh, that was his, his nickname. That was the, the name the apostles gave him. Barnabas means son of encouragement. His name actually is Joseph. And we find this in, in Acts chapter 4 when we first learn about him. And, and he is a Levite from Syria. And we will see this in the next lesson. And we will look at this some more again. So he goes there and he was full of the grace of God. Uh, and full of faith and full of the Holy Spirit. A man full of the Holy Spirit, okay? And full of faith. And, and we see this over and over in the book of Acts. And we need to be a people full of faith and full of the Holy Spirit. And he saw when he got there that the grace of the Lord was upon them. The hand of the Lord. The hand of the Lord is the anointing. By the hand of the Lord that was upon them. The anointing of the Holy Spirit that was upon these Jews. The, these leaders that have gone there um, to plant this church amongst the Gentiles. Uh, the, there was an anointing upon them to do this, to break through this barrier and understand this. It is also a demonic barrier. The enemy has set this up and, and, and this is a wall that spiritually also. So this is this was a huge spiritual battle and this we will see a continual uh, thrust of this battle as we go further in the book of Acts. In the next lesson, we will see this some more again. And then in the next and next, it just continues this, this battle. And we face this today still for the church to break out of, of, of our Christian environment and go after the lost. There is this barrier that we have to break through. And sometimes from one culture in a nation to another culture in that same nation, uh, the church has to break out of their culture. And so we need to, to embrace this understanding. This is the heart of Jesus. He continually said that we must go to other ethnos, to other nations, to other people, to other cultures. We must break out continually. We must not get stuck. And so if you watch this from a different culture, continue to look at how you need to break out. All right, enough said. So um, when he gets there and already there was a tremendous uh, harvest going on, a tremendous harvest move taking place. But when he comes there, it just gives impetus to, to it. And, and, and the Lord uh, uses him and he just evangelizes more, encourages them more to evangelize and more people now come to the Lord Jesus. Wow. Hallelujah. And then he remembered this because they are working amongst the Gentiles. And he remembers his old friend, Saul, 
who he remembers when he introduced him to the apostles in Jerusalem after Saul had been saved for about three years. He had gone to Jerusalem and he remembered the call of God upon how the Lord Jesus had called Saul to go and be a witness, to, uh, to be sent to the Gentiles to proclaim the gospel to the Gentiles. He remembered that. So he goes down to, to uh, uh, Tarsus and Tarsus is not far uh, from Antioch, actually. And he goes and he fetches him and he brings him back to Antioch. And for a whole year, they taught the church. And uh, as they taught the church, they must have evangelized more because that was, was who Paul was, Saul was. They must have evangelized uh, also, okay, and continued that. And they were getting the people baptized in the Holy Spirit because they were both full of the Holy Spirit and this was their normal pattern and the people were baptized in water. So they were properly discipled according to the New Testament book of Acts model that the Lord Jesus had instituted. And so they were doing this and it was here that the Christians, uh, sorry, <laughs> now I ran ahead of myself, where, where the... Um, the believers were first called Christian by the unbelievers. They didn't call themselves that. The unbelievers called them that. And it means little Christ or representatives of Christ. And it was first used as a mocking term to mock them and despise them. But they, they took that and it became something precious to them. Okay. So now, while they are there, uh, a team from a, a prophetic team from Jerusalem comes to visit them also. And, and this is something I want you to see. Traveling ministry is part of what happens in the book of Acts. It is it was happening already in the book of Acts. It is not a modern day thing. It was already in the book of Acts. And and the fivefold ministry was actually very mobile and traveling. Today we want fivefold ministry to be stuck in one church building. And it is not how it was in those days. The fivefold ministry was mobile and traveling. And so here comes a prophetic team with Agabus, the main prophet. And surely he must have been a fivefold ministry uh, a prophet in the office of the prophet. And they, they ministered prophetically to the church. But then also he brings a, a specific prophetic word that stands out above all the others and draws their attention to uh, something that they need to take quick action about. And he tells, brings them by the Holy Spirit. He prophesies to them that there was coming a, a famine that would be all over the whole of the, the, the um, uh, Roman Empire. Uh, and it, it happened, it is stated by Luke, that this was actually fulfilled, this word, during the time of uh, Emperor Claudius, the emperor in Rome, Claudius, who reigned from uh, AD 41 to AD 54. Okay, so this is important to, to understand. And just a note here, because today uh, we have this teaching about prophetic ministry, that prophetic ministry must only be encouraging and upbuilding and positive and whatever, and that prophets cannot prophesy disasters or warnings or judgments or, or anything like that. Well, again, we have to follow the scriptures and walk according to the word of God. And here in the scriptures, Agabus who we only read of twice in the book of Acts, brings a, a, a prophetic word that speaks about a famine that is coming. This is not a positive word. This is a warning. Okay? And so they take action. And remember how um, Barnabas, when he came to the church, uh, when he got saved uh, and was part of the church in Jerusalem, in the early church, uh, right after the day of Pentecost. Remember that uh, he 
because he was from C C Cyprus, he had a property there and he decided to sell that property. He brought the sale of that property to the church and laid it at the apostles' feet. Wow. You know, sometimes we have such an issue about giving in the body of Christ and in the church. And I know there has been tremendous abuses. And sometimes when, when people want to get back to simple Christianity, they, they don't want anything to do about giving. And it's a wrong attitude. Giving and generosity when you're full of the Holy Spirit is part of the church. It is part of how the Lord requires us to walk. And so this man was a generous man. And he, he, he stirred a whole spirit and movement of generosity in the early church. And, and he was a blessing that way to the church in Jerusalem. And now with this prophetic word of famine, he inspires the church in, in Antioch, the Gentile church, because they are learning new things. They come from a heathen background where sowing and reaping and giving into the kingdom of God was not part of their framework. And he teaches them about becoming a generous people. And so they give generously to bring relief aid to the church in Judea and Jerusalem. And they decided to take send this by Saul and Barnabas to Jerusalem. And so now we go to Judea. And in Judea at that time, Herod um, Agrippa, the grandson of Herod the Great, who killed uh, the babies during the time of the birth of Jesus and who died very quickly after that. And he, Herod the Great was also the one that um, improved the Temple Mount and, and did tremendous buildings projects there in Jerusalem and all over uh, uh, Palestine and who had built the, uh, the city of Syria uh, and, and so on and Tiberias and so on. So, so uh, um, he was a tremendous uh, architect and builder. Uh, and he was Herod the Great, but he was a, a, a tremendous tyrannical and brutal man, killed men, uh, his, his own wives and some of his children and whatever. So his children were then made tetrarchs, uh, and, uh, uh, and one of those tetrarchs was Herod Antipas, um, who actually ruled there in, in, in the area around Galilee in, and, and that part across the Jordan. And um, he had taken his brother Philip's wife, uh, 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 Herodias, and it was against him that uh, John the Baptist speaks out. And then he kills John the Baptist. So this is one of the sons of um, Herod the Great. Now a grandson of Herod the Great is Herod Antipas. And he is now ruling in, in uh, uh, Palestine. And so uh, to please the Jews, he uh, and, and obviously... Uh, there must have been quite a movement of the, the Holy Spirit uh, and the church in Jerusalem to such an extent. And, and James and, and some of the other apostles must have had such an impact upon the city and upon the region that, uh, Je that Herod decided to kill, arrest James and get him killed by the sword. He, killed, he got him killed by the sword. And then he arrested Peter because he wanted, we're now in Acts chapter 12, and he wanted to arrest, uh, he arrested Peter and he wanted to uh, get him killed uh, after, uh, after the um, feast of, uh, of um, uh, 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 unleavened bread uh, uh, after the, uh, the Passover. And it's interesting that it is at the same time that the Lord Jesus had been arrested and killed. And so, um, so the church earnestly prayed, unceasingly. They, they, they prayed without ceasing, earnestly and fervently. They prayed for Peter. And they called upon the Lord for justice against their adversary, 
Herod. Okay? And so, um, the night before Herod was about to put, uh, to kill and execute uh, Peter, Peter is asleep in the cell in prison and an angel comes to deliver him. This is the third time that Peter is imprisoned. And it's the second time that he's delivered out of prison by an angel. And it's interesting over, um, you know, this period of time, um, over the last few lessons, we've been learning about angelic ministry and we saw how, uh, you know, the angelic intersection and how the, the angels, um, you know, uh, orchestrate things in the harvest. And here now we see uh, angelic uh, 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 um, protection and deliverance taking place. And we still see these kinds of things today. And so here um, the angel wakes him up, say, get up, uh, put on your clothes, take your cloak, uh, take, put on your shoes. And, and the, the chains are broken off him uh, supernaturally by the angel. And then the, the prison door is opened and they walk out. He walks with the, the angel and then the one door after the other, like like digital, you know, like, like we would have a digital door swing open today. But this is supernatural. Wow. Hallelujah. And then they get to the, the outer gate and that gate swings open. And they walk out and they walk down the road. And then the angel disappears. And this is just like when you read uh, the, the heavenly man uh, book. Uh, 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 yeah, the, the book, the heavenly man, Brother Yuan's book, um, how he got delivered out of prison in China. Uh, something very similar. The Lord has done this kind of thing throughout the ages. And he will still do that because there's much more persecution coming. So don't be surprised at this. And once the angel left, Peter realized, this is not a dream. I have been delivered. And he must have rejoiced and be excited that the Lord remembered him and delivered him out of jail. So he, he goes to one of the houses of the believers where a group of believers had been gathering and praying for Peter. And it's the house of Mary, the mother of John. John, who is also called Mark. And um, so this John Mark is the, is, the, is the Mark that wrote the Gospel of Mark. And we're also told in Colossians 4 that he is the cousin or really more a relative, probably more like a nephew of, of, of Barnabas because he was a young man and Barnabas was a much older man. All right. So, but he is, he's a relative uh, uh, of Barnabas. And uh, so Paul, Peter knocks on the door and Rhoda, a, a servant girl there, goes and and and, and uh, to the door and she hears Peter's voice and she's so excited she forgets to open the door she runs back tells them Peter is at the door and they say no 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 this cannot be this must be his angel or we probably today would have said this is a ghost but she insists because Peter then keeps on banging on the door and so she runs back and she um, uh, 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 opens the door and Peter comes in and he waves at them because they must have kicked up a racket, excited that Peter had been delivered and the Lord Jesus had answered their prayers. Wow. Hallelujah. And so uh, they rejoiced and he tells them what happened. And then he, he disappears. In the, before he does, he says, um, tell James and the brothers. Now this James that they, they need to tell is James, the brother of the Lord Jesus. Okay? Uh, the son of Mary. 
the mother of Jesus. Okay? Uh, and then the other brothers, the other apostles. And he goes somewhere where he hid for a little bit. And um, so it probably is in the same time that Saul and Barnabas is then in Jerusalem also delivering the aid. Now, Herod, the next morning, wants to put Peter to death. They go and look for him. They cannot find him in the jail. The jail is still locked. The, the guards are there, but there's no Peter. They made a search. They cannot find Peter. And, you know, as they did in those days, it's, it's horrible that they did this, but this is what they did. They, um, Herod had all the guards executed. And so then he leaves Jerusalem and goes back to his headquarters in Caesarea because Caesarea was the headquarters of Palestine, the Roman headquarters of Palestine. Now, while he is there, uh, remember this is not during the time of the famine. He was very angry with the cities of Tyre and Sidon, which is in Lebanon, north of, of, of uh, Caesarea on the coast. Uh, and he was very angry with them. But this is the time of famine and they are in desperate need. They need food. And they had to get their food from Judea. Sorry, I need to just say this. The famine in Judea was very severe. Of all the places in the Roman Empire, the famine was the most severest according to uh, um, Josephus. During that time, there was a, a, a queen, and I, I gave all the details about her. Um, uh, oh, I forgot to put that in um, uh, 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 in the notes. But uh, she was a queen from, from um, uh, 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 northern Iraq, that area, the, the Kurdistan area uh, uh, today, today's Kurdistan area. And her name was Helena. You know, I have a Helena in my house. <laughs> She's my wife. Uh, I have Queen Helena right here in the house. But anyway, a, a joke. Uh, anyway, uh, put that aside. So her name was Helena. And she had converted to Judaism and had built a palace for herself in uh, Jerusalem and, and was living in Jerusalem at this time. But she was a wealthy woman. And so during this famine, she got corn from Egypt, a lot of corn, great quantities of corn from Egypt, and also um, dried fruit from Cyprus to feed the people in Jerusalem. So the relief from Antioch uh, for the, the Jewish believers was very needed because they probably would not have received relief because they were ostracized uh, 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 by the rest of the Jews. Okay, so it's tremendous how the Lord took care of his people during this famine. So it's still during the time of the famine Herod is back in, 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 in Caesarea and the people from Tyre and Sidon is in desperate need of food. And as I have there in the notes, that uh, they had, um, uh, you know, all the way in the time of Solomon even, uh, Solomon provided food for Tyre and Sidon and they provided a, a, a t timber, a cedar, uh, and workers to, for the, the building of the temple. So 900 years later, this is still the same problem because Tyre and Sidon is on a very, very narrow coastal plain. There's mountains right behind them shooting up very high. So there's no uh, a, 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 a fertile land for them to do any agriculture. And, and Judah, was the, the coastal plain of Judah was a very fertile land for agriculture. And so they needed their food from, from Herod. So they come to see Herod. And so th there's an appointed day for them to see him. He sits uh, uh, on his throne and uh, in all his royal robes, and he starts to address them. And as he addresses them, they shout, this is the voice, not of a man, but of a God. And 
he does not renounce it, but he laps it up. And the, the Lord Jesus sends an angel and strikes him down. And he falls to the ground, uh, Josephus tells us, with tremendous stomach pain. And, and for five days, worms were eating him on the inside, Joseph, uh, Josephus says. And other historical accounts give this also, uh, secular accounts. And he died in AD 44. So we know that the, the famine, and, and, and we have other records that confirm this, that the famine was around about uh, 43, 44 for several years. So we know exactly when he died. It was in AD 44. And the Lord cut him off to vindicate the death of James. Okay, now, how does this work? I want to teach you about the, the justice of the Lord Jesus. Remember, I started with, with Jesus, the Lord Jesus answers prayer with justice. So how does this work? Let me explain it to you. It works this way, that uh, the Lord Jesus gives justice and he teaches this in, in, in Math, uh, Luke chapter 18. And he teaches us about justice. And he tells the parable of uh, how he wants us to pray with persistence and with faith and without ceasing that we need to pray. Okay. Uh, and so he tells of a widow that comes to an unrighteous judge who neither fears God or men. And she petitions him to give her justice against her adversary. And he wouldn't listen to her, but she wouldn't stop. And then he says, I better give him justice. Otherwise, he will wear, she will wear me out. And he gives her justice. And then the Lord Jesus says, did you hear what the judge said? Will not God, our, your father, Give justice to them who, who calls upon him. Okay. And then he says, and will he not do it speedily? Wow. Okay. Hallelujah. Speedily. But will he find faith, this kind of faith upon the earth? Now, to understand this, this subject about justice, we have to see who is the judge. And John, the apostle in Revelations gives us the picture of this judge. This is the Lord Jesus. And we find this in, in John, uh, not uh, Revelations 19 from verse 11. And he describes the Lord Jesus that he rides out on a white horse. He is crowned with many crowns. He has fire in his eyes, a double-edged sword coming out of his mouth, with which he, he cuts down the nations. And then it says, on his thigh is written, King of kings and Lord of lords. He is the word of God, and he rides out to bring justice to judge with justice, to bring justice and to make war against these enemies. And then it says he has an iron scepter. And, and this is a quote that about the iron scepter is a quote from Psalm 2 about the Lord Jesus. And there it says that he beats his enemies to pieces like pottery with that iron scepter. This is the judge of heaven, the same Lord Jesus that walked Galilee, the same Lord Jesus that died on the cross for us, the same Lord Jesus that was resurrected and ascended on high, that is seated at the right hand of the Father. It is this Lord Jesus. This is him right now, ruling from heaven as the King of kings and the Lord of lords and as the judge of the living and the dead. 
it is this Lord Jesus with fire in his eyes, with double-edged sword coming out of his mouth and take with his iron scepter beating all of his enemies to pieces. Obviously, first of all, these enemies are uh, 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 the demonic spirit and, and that rule. But it includes human beings. Those that are enemies of the cross. Understand this, that Jesus today still is judging. We see this judgment in the, in the book of Acts. He judged Ananias and Sapphira and they dropped down dead because they had um, lied to the Holy Spirit. That was the Lord Jesus judging. We see in um, Revelations, uh, when he writes to the churches, that he says that he will judge the woman Jezebel. This is the Lord Jesus speaking himself, writing to a church in today's Turkey, a, 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 a real church. This is not a, 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 like a little story. Um, all right. And so uh, he, 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 he tells them that he will put her to a sick bed on a sick bed. And if she doesn't repent, he will kill it with her children. So understand this. The Lord Jesus still judges today. That is what he does. And so he says that we must call upon him. And the ch church in the book of Acts prayed the Psalms. We know from, Psalm, uh, from Acts chapter 4, after Peter and John had been released out of jail um, and they come back to the church praying, they prayed Psalm 2. Why does the nations uh, rage and conspire against the Holy One? And they prayed Psalm 2. And so they prayed the Psalms that speaks of justice, of, of the justice of the Lord. And I gave you two Psalms there, Psalm 37 and Psalm 143. Go and look at those Psalms. And it's clear the kind of prayer that they would have prayed, petitioning the Lord Jesus, the judge of heaven, the one with fire in his eyes, concerning Herod, when the, he had killed James and had Peter imprisoned the kind of prayer that they would have prayed would have been lord jesus bring give us justice on behalf of our enemy our adversary give either mercy that he repents and changes and that's always what we first want we want to repentance we want mercy given for repentance so that they can turn to Jesus and be saved for eternity but if they do not repent that they then that you you remove them or cut them off and that's what happens in this case as Herod is sitting on his throne and they say, this is not the voice of a man, but the voice of a God. At that moment, what happens is this. They, um, uh, um, uh, he does not renounce it. He's given opportunity for mercy. If he renounced that and repented of this and of what he had done concerning James, he would have been granted mercy and he would have kept on living. But in his arrogance, in his pomp, and in his evil, he was a wicked man and an enemy of the cross. What happens is the Lord Jesus sends an angel and strikes him down de dead. He beats him to pieces with his iron scepter. He cuts him off with his, his, uh, uh, the sword coming out of his mouth. This is the Lord Jesus. He triumphs over his enemies still today. And so now we can call and petition him for justice. Now, let me say this. If you are vindictive, angry and bitter against someone. 
in a place of authority or in, in a place that with that person is greatly uh, opposing the work of God and an enemy of the cross. Let me say this. If you are vindictive, you cannot pray prayers of justice because those prayers will backfire and judgment will come to you and you will have lots of trouble. You see, we have to start from the place where Jesus said, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you or, or, or who persecute you. Do good to those who mistreat you. Okay? Forgive and you will be forgiven. Do not judge lest you be judged. Give and it shall be given to you. We have to operate from that forgiving and blessing attitude. You have to always operate from mercy. And I know we often joke and say we have not been given. We, we don't have a lot of mercy or whatever. But let me say this. We have to operate from this place of love and mercy and grace and forgiveness and blessing. But let me say this, don't just stay in that ditch and not be balanced that you also embrace the judgment of the Lord Jesus because he is just and he judges still today and his enemies of the cross today. And so we personally have been involved in several situations where there were 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 people that opposed the work of God and caused great damage to the work of God, uh, where people were martyred and everything, and where the Lord called, you know, led us to pray prayers of justice that either they repent or that the Lord remove them or cut them off. And they did not repent, and the Lord took them out. Now, you don't want to pray that people just be taken out and killed. That is not, must not be our heart. No, our heart must be for mercy. But if, the, and if somebody opposes, uh, re, just recently we had a situation where there's a situation where um, we're involved with, uh, where uh, some decisions had to be made uh, in, in, at the local county for things to open up for the work of the Lord to take place uh, during this 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 uh, lockdown and and so um there was a, a, a very e e evil person that was continually and spitefully opposing especially the the church and not wanting anything to happen and so we prayed this kind of prayer and that person was just removed out of the way, not killed, just removed out of the way. And a, a more righteous person gave the, 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 the go ahead and things went forward. And we thank the Lord Jesus for that. So he answers prayer with justice. But we have to call on him. He is the judge of heaven. He is also the one that executes justice, not us. This is not like a court. This is not like going to court and now uh, have a whole court case, like the courts of heaven, uh, 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 um, uh, uh, wrong doctrine. It's not like that at all. No, this is clearly just seeing the Lord Jesus according to what he says there and what we see in the book of Acts portrayed. And this is not an everyday prayer. This is very specific things that the Lord will lead you to. If you have somebody that opposes you or gives you trouble, bless them, love them, pray for them. Okay? And so that is how it works. So after uh, uh, Herod was de dead, we see that the work of the Lord continues. The, the word of God spread continues, grew, and multiplied. In other words, in the midst of this, they would not be stopped. The famine did not stop the multiplication in the harvest and, and people getting saved and the churches growing. The, the famine didn't stop it. And the, the persecution, this demonic attack through Herod didn't stop it or, or, or cause it to falter. It just continued. And once that was done, they just continued to advance forward. And then <coughs> uh, Saul and Barnabas returns 
after they had done their work delivering the relief aid, they return back to Antioch. And so, Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for what we learned today. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will teach us by the Holy Spirit when and how to petition you for justice. And that we will see how powerful you are. And that we will not just uh, be stuck in, in a place that you love and that's all. But that we see that you're a righteous and just God. And that you judge also and bring, bring judgment. And that it is for the benefit of the body of Christ. And so we thank you for this. And so we want to learn from this. And we say, Holy Spirit, teach us how to do this in the name of Jesus. And we pray that the gospel, even during this coronavirus uh, lockdown time, and as we're coming out of it, we, we want to pray that it will continue. The gospel it will advance greatly now and nothing will stop it in Jesus name. Thank you, Jesus.